Good day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. Thanks for visiting the off-grid enclave. This video is part 2 of the compost heating series. For part 1, check in the description down below. Compost heating is a renewable energy source that is cheap, reliable and has up to 24 month cycle time in good conditions. As described in the last video, we are looking to source about 10 to 12 kilowatts of heat out of our compost project. To achieve this, we will be needing about 100 cubic meters of compressed wooden compost. You can see the spreadsheet with the estimated stats for the compost heating. For further details on this, check part 1 of this video series. This video is about integrating the compost heating into your existing heating cycle and design of the compost itself. In this picture you can see the tube heat exchanger that will be used to transfer the heat from the compost system to the house heating cycle. In the end this might look quite confusing so I will explain to you guys step by step. Here you can see the function of the existing heating cycle. The red arrows is the flow coming from the heat source and the blue arrows is the backflow. Use two valves to control the heat exchanger. You can see them in the pictures marked with the numbers 1 and 2. If we close valve number 2, the backflow of the system is forced through the heat exchanger and hence is collecting the heat from the compost heating. After that, the backflow will go to the normal heat source of the house. For spring, summer and autumn, this should be sufficient. For proper winter, I expect that it is required to run the normal heating source of the house in addition to the compost heating. On the last picture, you can see where the in and out connection of the compost will be. It will be set up for counter current flow. In our first video about the concept of the compost heating, we referenced a setup like this. However, we will be using a different construction to house our massive pile of 100 cubic meters of compost. Before we head any further, this is a good time to poke for a like if you enjoyed this content. If you want to keep up to date with this project, subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks a lot. If you have any questions, ideas or input, don't be shy, hop on our Discord. I'll put the link down there in the description. Now that we have that out of the way, let's have a look at the design of this compost project. We will be using a brick building that has a roof attached to it already. It is rather old and in bad condition, but for running this project a few holes in the roof is no problem at all. There will be a little service room attached on the back to house the pump, the expansion bulb, thermometers, and the necessary management valves. Here is where the water pipes from the house will be coming in to transfer the heat. Our project will be walled in from three sides. The main issue with that is for the compost to properly work it needs oxygen. In the reference setups for these types of heatings this is why they are freestanding. There is a lot of easy access for oxygen to pass through the compost and keep the composting process going. In our solution we need to figure something to work around that. We will be installing tubings in the lower part of the compost that will have a vent coming from the maintenance room. Using a reasonable sized fan this ensures that you can move a lot of oxygen and fresh air through the compost. It also means that in winter you're not using the cold air from the outside but the semi-warmed air from the maintenance room. This should help in efficiency and not cool out the compost too much compared to normal cold air from the outside. The next steps in this preparing the building to house the compost, preparing a little room there to house the maintenance equipment like pumps, expansion bulbs, thermometers and all that it will probably take a month or two. I will keep you guys up to date. With that we shall conclude this video. Enjoy your day and make it count.